Welcome to Osteomed. This training video is designed to provide guidelines on how and when to use the Osteomed Reflection First MPJ Implant System in surgery. The system is indicated for reconstruction of severely disabled and or painful metatarsal phalangeal joints resulting from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, traumatic arthritis, or failure of prior arthroplasty. Osteomed has designed the Reflection First MPJ Implant System to achieve three goals, pain relief, superior function, and longevity. To achieve pain relief and superior function, we create implant stability with a cone and cone implant design. This provides inherent geometric stability and secures bone to implant seating. With simplified instrumentation, the implant is placed using a reaming technique, which is intended to increase implant to cortical wall interface. The reflection implant system is simple, predictable, and effective. The following case will guide you through the step-by-step -step reaming technique and placement of the reflection first MPJ implant. Initial resections. Step one. Remove four to five millimeters of bone from the metatarsal head with a sagittal or oscillating saw. Orient the blade to remove more bone dorsally versus plantar. The bone cuts are performed to create a relatively flat surface on which to start the guide pen and to create space to plantar flex the hallux in order to access the canals of the metatarsal and the phalanx. Care should be taken to avoid impingement of the sesamoids. This cut is not critical to final implant fit, position, or alignment. Step 2. Remove approximately 3 millimeters of bone from the phalangeal base. This cut should pass through the subchondral bone distal to the concave surface of the phalangeal base. Care should be taken to leave the intrinsic plantar flexors and the sesamoid apparatus attachments intact if possible. This cut is not critical to final implant fit, position, or alignment. If the sesamoids have become immobile, you may elect to release them with a maglamory type elevator. Metatarsal preparation. Step 1. Locate the guide pin insertion point on the metatarsal shaft. This point is generally centered medially to laterally and 2 to 3 millimeters more plantar than dorsal on the metatarsal head. It is important that the guide pin is properly placed because the position and angle of the guide pin determine the final position of the metatarsal component. In the sagittal plane, the metatarsal component should be positioned low within the metatarsal metaphysis to minimize any elevation of the metatarsal head. With a guide pin chucked in a drill or pin driver, slide the pin into the metatarsal shaft and push the point of the pin slightly into the bone at the insertion point. Step 2. Alignment and insertion of the guide pin. Drive the guide pin into the metatarsal canal to a point beyond the isthmus of the shaft but short of the metatarsal base. Once the guide pin has penetrated the dense bone of the metatarsal head, it should advance freely through the intramedullary canal. If continuous resistance is encountered, it is likely that the pin is misdirected and is engaging the cortical wall of the metatarsal diaphysis. If this is the case, check the alignment and starting position and redirect the pin. Resistance should be encountered as the tip of the pin meets the cancellous bone of the metatarsal base. Do not drive the guide pin into or beyond the metatarsal cuneiform joint. Use a mini C-arm to visualize the metatarsal shaft and aid in positioning the guide pin. If alignment is not correct, remove the guide pin and reinsert the pin. As an alternative to the use of the mini C-arm, the alignment guide can be used to determine proper guide pin alignment. With one of the alignment rods over the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal shaft and the other over the medial aspect, tilt the drill and guide pin until the guide rods are parallel and centered on the metatarsal shaft. You may reposition the insertion point if the alignment rods are not centered on the shaft in either the medial to lateral or dorsal to plantar plane. To reduce the potential of penetrating the metatarsal cuneiform joint during reaming, now replace the sharp pointed guide pin with a blunt tipped guide pin. Seat the pin into the base of the metatarsal by tapping it gently with a mallet. A final check of the guide pin alignment is advised. Step 3. 
cylindrical reaming. With the power off, place the starter straight reamer into a Jacobs chuck and slide it over the blunt-tipped guide pin. Drive the starter straight reamer over the guide pin into the metatarsal canal approximately 45 millimeters or one and three quarters of an inch. This point is about six millimeters proximal to the flutes of the reamer as indicated by the line etched around the reamer shaft. Once this bone has been penetrated, the reamer should advance with little resistance. If continuous resistance is encountered, reamer position and alignment should be checked. Cylindrical reaming should extend beyond the length of the actual implant stem in order to allow clearance for the cone reamer guide and avoid the potential for impingement of the stem tip. Remove the starter straight reamer from the Jacobs chuck and install the small straight reamer. Next, drive the small straight reamer over the guide pin to the same depth as the starter straight reamer. Cylindrical reaming for larger diameter stems should be delayed until final determination of the cone size. Step 4. Placement of the Cone Reamer Guide The cone reamer guide maintains a 17 degree angle between the axis of the ream cylinder in the metatarsal shaft and the cone to be reamed into the metaphysis. This guide orients the position of the articulating head. Insert the small cone reamer guide into the ream cylindrical canal until the serrations come in contact with the resected surface of the bone. Make sure the angled stem points dorsally. Place one of the cone reamers on the guide and note the direction of the reamer stem. Rotate the cone reamer guide slightly from medial to lateral with a hemostat and note the orientation of the reamer stem. Check to see that the cone reamer will be evenly spaced in the metatarsal head. Rotating the guide laterally will position the center of the metatarsal head laterally and will reduce the effective IM angle. Conversely, rotating the guide medially will position the center of the head medially and will increase the effective IM angle. A general rule of thumb is that the reamer stem should be parallel with the second ray, provided there are no deformities involving the second ray. Once the orientation of the cone reamer has been determined, the cone reamer guide can be pushed into the canal to the point where the serrations prevent further rotation of the guide. Step 5. Cone Reaming The diameter of the cone reamer shafts is a quarter of an inch. The outer edge of the reamer should just reach the external cortical surface of the metatarsal metaphysis medially, laterally, and dorsally. Place the small cone reamer into a Jacobs chuck and slide the small cone reamer over the stem of the cone reamer guide. Do not turn the power on until the reamer is fully seated over the stem of the cone reamer guide. With power on, advance the guide and reamer as a unit until the cutting surfaces of the reamer are fully engaged into the bone. Advance the reamer to the desired position, taking into consideration how much bone was resected and how much metatarsal length is to be removed. Reaming should be done at a speed less than 1000 RPM. Irrigation will minimize the potential for bone necrosis and heating of the reamer guide interface. As the reamer teeth become filled with bone, it may be necessary to clean the reamer to maintain cutting efficiency. It is important that the cone reamer be advanced far enough into the metatarsal metaphysis to allow for satisfactory dorsiflexion without requiring excessive shortening of the phalangeal base. If desired, greater dorsiflexion may be accomplished by reaming deeper on the metatarsal side of the joint. Once the appropriate reaming depth has been established, the diameter can be expanded if desired. First, ream with the medium, and then, if necessary, the large straight reamer. Then, proceed with a medium cone reamer, and then, if necessary, the large cone reamer to expand the diameter of the cone. It is important to check the position of the reamer teeth with respect to the plantar cortex. Final implant position should not impinge the sesamoid apparatus, and the cortex should be left sufficiently thick to support weight bearing through a solid shelf of plantar bone. Step 6. Trial Reduction First, insert the appropriate sized metatarsal stem trial. The stem trials are sized small, medium, and large. Next, insert the appropriate sized metatarsal head trial. The head trials are sized standard, long, and extra long. For ease of use, the heads are color-coded. Green for standard, 
blue for long, and red for extra long. Check the joint for range of motion and stability. Use a saw, rasp, burr, or rongers to remove excess bone around the trial components to reduce the potential for damaging the actual implants once they are in place. Now, phalangeal preparation. The proximal metaphysis of the phalanx typically flares more plantarly than dorsally. This plantar flare accommodates the attachment of the intrinsic plantar flexors via the sesamoid apparatus. The phalangeal component should be placed centrally with the stem slightly inclined from proximal central to distal dorsal. This will allow for optimal fit of the base while avoiding potentially breaking through the dorsal cortex proximately or plantar cortex distally. Step 1. Locate the guide pin insertion point on the phalangeal shaft. The guide pin should be centered medial to lateral on the phalangeal shaft and dorsal to plantar on the base of the proximal phalanx. Adequate exposure is important for proper visualization and access to the phalangeal base. The hallux should be plantar flexed to about 90 degrees and the plantar edge of the base should be visible. Step 2. Alignment and insertion of the guide pin. Drive the guide pin into the shaft of the proximal phalanx, taking care not to penetrate the IP joint. Align the guide pin parallel with the shaft of the proximal phalanx medial laterally and direct the guide pin toward the dorsal aspect of the IP joint in the dorsal to plantar direction. Once the pin has penetrated the subchondral bone of the base, it should advance easily through the phalangeal canal. Resistance should be encountered again as the tip of the pin approaches the distal end of the proximal phalanx. Remove the sharp guide pin when this resistance is encountered. Replace the sharp guide pin with a blunt-tipped guide pin. Gently tap the pin with a mallet to seat it in the cancellous bone. Step 3. Reaming the proximal phalanx. Place the starter straight reamer over the guide pin and advance it just enough to break through the dense subchondral bone of the base. Place the small phalangeal reamer over the guide pin and ream into the base of the proximal phalanx to the desired depth. Step 4. Establishing the phalangeal depth. The depth and position of the cone determine the final position of the phalangeal component and amount of dorsiflexion that can be achieved immediately following the surgery. Insert the small green plastic phalangeal sizer into the ream phalangeal base. Check the range of motion. If more motion is desired, the proximal phalanx can be reamed deeper. Once the desired depth has been established with a small phalangeal reamer, the diameter of the cone can be increased if necessary using the medium and large phalangeal reamers as desired. First, ream with the medium and then the large phalangeal reamer if needed. Step 5. Base Planing After depth and cone diameter have been determined, use the base planer to remove excess bone from around the opening of the cone. Removal of excess bone ensures the flange of the implant is in intimate contact with the surrounding cortical bone. When the bone is completely planed, the base planer should turn freely on the smooth pilot without any resistance. Step 6. Trial Reduction Insert the phalangeal trial. Check the joint for range of motion and stability. If desired, greater dorsiflexion may be accomplished by reaming deeper either on the metatarsal or phalangeal side of the joint. Now, the final seating of the implant. Insertion of the implant. Carefully select the desired implant sizes and remove each from the double-pouched sterile packages. Care should be taken to avoid damaging the Morse taper on the metatarsal component. Insert the metatarsal stem first. The component should be inserted by hand. Gently guide the cone to the proper rotational orientation. Use the metatarsal stem impactor and mallet to seat the component. Insert the phalangeal component, orienting the flat edge towards the plantar surface of the proximal phalanx. Use the phalangeal impactor and mallet to seat the phalangeal component. The metatarsal head component is placed on the Morse taper of the metatarsal stem. The taper should be wiped clean and the head should be seated using the metatarsal head impactor. With all the components implanted, 
check alignment, range of motion, and carefully inspect soft tissue balance. Perform any adjustments if the alignment, range of motion, component fixation, or soft tissue balance is suspect. Remove any debris from the joint space or implant, irrigate, then close using standard closure techniques. Now, let's review the steps outlined in the video. Initial resections. Step 1. Remove 4 to 5 millimeters of bone from the metatarsal head with a sagittal or oscillating saw. Step 2. Remove approximately 3 millimeters of bone from the phalangeal base. Metatarsal preparation. Step 1. Locate the guide pin insertion point on the metatarsal shaft. Step 2. Align and insert the guide pin. Step 3. Ream the metatarsal shaft. Step 4. Place the cone reamer guide. Step 5. Cone ream. Step 6. Trial reduction. Phalangeal preparation. Step 1. Locate the guide pin insertion point on the proximal phalanx. Step 2. Align and insert the guide pin. Step 3. Ream the proximal phalanx. Step 4. Establish phalangeal depth. Step 5. Base plane. Step 6. Trial reduction. Final seating of the implant. Insert the implant. Before clinical use, the surgeon should be familiar with all aspects of the reflection toe system, its instrumentation, indications, contraindications, and the surgical technique protocol. Accepted surgical practice should be followed in postoperative care. Patients should be advised of the limitations of their prosthesis and should be instructed to govern their activities accordingly. The Reflection First MPJ implant system is approved for use with bone cement. You should now have a clear understanding of the steps to place a reflection toe implant. If you have any questions, please ask your Osteomed Territory Manager or call customer service at 800-456-7779.